I have a lot of failures. Uh, I applied in total five times. Games and gamification. My name is Milena Cvitkova and I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Methodology at the London School of Economics. Uh, I'm a sociologist by training and I work in the field of uh, computational social science. So I use uh, computational methods such as social network analysis, agent-based modeling, uh, online experiments uh, and large data analysis including machine learning to, uh, to study social phenomena. My undergraduate education was actually in architecture at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, and uh, if I have to credit you know, the single event that made me change my mind, uh, I would say it was uh, kind of a big social protest that happened in 2003. Uh, that was the protest against the war in Iraq. And it was the first time I became politically involved and um, started thinking about society you can say. And so later, actually, uh, what introduced me more deeply to social science uh, was a book by philosophers uh, called uh, Deleuze uh, and Gattari. Um, they're French philosophers. And it, it's a philosophy book, but pretty much, in essence, what it does is that it uh, looks at complex systems and use this as a kind of a paradigm of looking at the world. Currently, I'm working uh, with uh, a computer scientist and a social scientist who works at a business school. Um, and so we are working on a project funded by the Volkswagen Foundation. Um, and this is on studying inequality. And particularly, we're interested in, um, in using large-scale online experiments where we simulate groups of um, kind of social groups, so like large groups of individuals interacting with each other, uh, playing different games, interacting over time, and what we're interested in seeing is under what conditions inequality emerges. Uh, we're collaborating with a group at Aarhus University. Uh, they're called uh, Science at Home. Uh, they're part of the astrophysics department there, um, and they are um, using games and gamification to study in their context, usually um, kind of actually quantum um, physics, uh, but now we're trying to do to use gamification to study um, to study social systems, and so actually one of the biggest cha uh, challenges we've been facing now is uh, uh, is to I mean for me it, it has been the biggest challenge has been to um, work with other people and to delegate. Uh, so I actually have quite a quite a bit of experience uh, with uh, interdisciplinary dis uh, collaboration, but often it was. Um, quite immediate, uh, working with people face-to-face, uh, -face, meeting often. Um, and now the problem is we're working across countries and um, we are also working with different specialists and within a kind of a, a hierarchical structure that you cannot directly communicate with developers, you have to talk to their manager uh, and often I cannot even talk to their manager. I have to talk to, um, to you know, my collaborator who would talk to their manager and so on. So this has been kind of one of the biggest challenges. Um, that we're facing now. Uh, but in general, um, I mean, the other, of course, other kind of more concrete things is uh, how to, how do we involve uh, large groups of um, uh, individuals uh, to play uh, games uh, for no financial stimulation, just for the fun of it, right? And that has been one of the, the biggest challenges. And it's also interesting because there is a lot of online data uh, out there that has been what has driving this big data revolution. Uh, but uh, the fact is, often if you come up with a research question from the social scientists, it's, it's hard to find the data you want. And this is uh, uh, the idea here that we're trying to create our own data. We're trying to create these artificial communities to, using games uh, where we want to study particular social phenomena, particular social mechanisms uh, to help us. It's not more difficult for, for women to do programming. Uh, I think the problem is, is that a lot of women give up more. Uh, and so that's, that would be one of my first advice. Do not give up. Do not think that this is supposed to be easy. Or if it, if it looks that somebody um, 
it appears easy to say a man or to un somebody else. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. Right? It, it, what, what it appears, it, it's hard, but it requires perseverance, it requires practice, uh, and everything else comes with uh, after that. Um, and something else actually I want to mention a lot, which has been very helpful for me, is about getting a mentor. Um, so um, I think that uh, often uh, we, we we often kind of are misled by going to kind of a better university or looking at the new shiny degree with a lot of prime promises. But I think what's more important, especially at the master's level and above, um, is that you you get a very uh, well somebody who who's, who's willing to mentor you, somebody who whose work you admire. And even if you don't have very close, necessarily want to do the kind of work they do, but they're open-minded enough to, to encourage your own interests and to, um, to provide you with an environment that's inspiring, nurturing. I guess the other thing is, I mean, it's kind of related actually to the first part where I talked about um, not giving up and persevering. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's another aspect that... Um, that you might have a lot of failures, uh, but that's fine. Uh, I, for example, have had a lot of failures. Uh, for an example, uh, I got my PhD uh, at Cornell University in sociology. Uh, I applied in total five times uh, to Cornell, uh, twice as an architect, uh, because it was the one of the best Arab architecture program. I actually got in, but I did not get financial aid, so I couldn't afford it. Then I applied again um, as a mas for a master's degree. I did not get in. I applied again for a PhD degree. I got waitlisted, and uh, last time I got in uh, with financial aid. Um, and that's how I did my uh, sociology. And I can give you an example for everything what I've achieved. Uh, there's always been a failure uh, before that. So I think the most essential thing is to find strengths and to play with them. Mm -hmm.